it can be said with a little or no argument that a parent's primary concern is that their kids turn out okay. Nothing else in the world worries a parent more. If we're honest with ourselves, most of us are also scared to death that we will somehow mess our kids up and they won't become upstanding, upstanding and productive members of society. And as Christians, it goes one step further. We're worried that our children won't grow up to be faithful, church-going, and God-honoring adults. How can parents mold and mentor our children? Our guest speaker, Pastor Erwin Amador, is a graduate of Master of Divinity at Grace School of Theology in Woodland, Texas. He is currently doing his Doctor of Ministry program, as well as serving as a senior pastor of Green Hills Christian Fellowship, or GCF in the Valley, Philippines. He's also one of the hosts of Expositor's edition on YouTube. He's married to Christine and the Lord blessed them with two wonderful children, Kayla, which is 19 years old, and Toby, 16 years old. Brothers and sisters, let us give a warm welcome to our speaker today, Brother Pastor, Brother and our pastor, Erwin Amador. Good uh, morning, uh, Freedom in Christ Church. Yeah, thank you for uh, for for having me here again, and I'd like to thank the leaders of FCC for for inviting me again. I think the last time I I, I preached on uh, uh, evangelism, and uh, today I was uh, asked by Sister Irene to uh, to to preach to you about uh, parenting. And it's just uh, so timely because here in the here in our church we just uh, finished uh, uh, God-centered family series, which is uh, one of of course one of the topic is about the biblical duties uh, of family members and especially the uh, the the parents. Now for for uh, yeah, for starters, uh, I want just to 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 see this uh, this survey okay, from Barna. Uh, I, I believe you you know about this uh, this this group. And as you can see, the, the Gen Zs and, and even the millennials, uh, you can see the, the top priority. For, for, for the Gen Zs, the top priority is about their, their education, while for the millennials, their, their top priority is to be uh, financially uh, independent. And uh, worse about, worse about, uh, about spirituality, you can see way, way below, okay? Uh, when talking about spiritual uh, maturity for Gen Z, it's about 16% and about 29% for, for the uh, millennials. The question is, why is it spiritual maturity is no longer top priority for our children? And even some say that uh, when our children reach uh, college, they, we lose them. We already lose them in the world. They no longer attend church. They're, there's, they're no longer with us, parents, uh, attending, attending church. So why is it spiritual maturity is no longer a top priority for, uh, for our children? Does our children see that spiritual maturity is our top priority in life as parents? Okay? Do they see that spiritual maturity is our top priority. Just like the video that we, uh, we saw a while ago, uh, our children, sometimes they don't hear us, but they do what they see in us. What we are doing, that's what they are, they are uh, that served as an example for them. So if, if spiritual maturity is not a top priority for us, as parents, then definitely for our children, it will never be a top priority. Yes, the church, uh, the church is here to, to partner with you in discipling your children, but it does not mean that you will abdicate your duties as parents. What I want us to, to understand this, this morning is that uh, our duties as parents is to mold and mentor our children. The church is here to help you, but it is your, okay, for parents, it is your duty to mold and mentor your children. It is my prayer 
uh, today, this morning, that the Word of God will do its work in order for us to experience a, a breakthrough, a breakthrough in, in our life in order for us to be able to fulfill our duties and responsibilities in our family. Let me, uh, let me just say that our duties and responsibilities Church for parents, uh, this is a response. Okay, this is just a response to the gospel truth that we receive. Okay, it is all because we know that Jesus died for us for our sins, and it is because that we have eternal life now because that is through faith in Jesus, and that is one way of saying us thank you. It's a thank you to Jesus. That's why we we will fulfill or we must fulfill our duties as parents. So when we say we, we want a thank you life unto Jesus, a thank you life unto God is, is expressed okay, in, in fulfilling our responsibilities, our duties as parents. So once again, here's what I want us to learn this, this morning. For parents, mold and mentor your children. Let me repeat that. Mold and mentor your children children the scripture has given us uh, parents okay as a, a guide guidelines on how we will mentor our children the bad thing is that it was distorted by sin god has a design for us parents on how we will mentor our children but it was distorted by sin but the good news is that we can we can redeem it it can be redeemed, it can be restored through the power of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So on the basis of the finished work of Jesus, we can reclaim, we can restore okay, the, the design of God for, for us as parents. That is through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, he has given us this divine power. Okay, the divine power in order for us to live a godly life. And part of that godly life is our duties as, as parents to our children. Now, in my own uh, journey as, as a father, okay, I could not say that I am perfect with, with the way I am fulfilling my responsibilities. I got married to Christine February 18 of 2001. And the Lord has blessed us with two children. Kyla is already 19 years old. Toby is 16 years old. I am not a perfect husband nor a perfect parent when it comes to parenting to, with, with Kyla and then Toby. There's no course in college nor even in high school a subject about parenting. So it's, it's a up and down journey. And, and it is only by the grace of God that uh, now Kyla is already college and Toby is already at grade 10. It is only by his grace that I am somehow, I, I do, I, I'm doing my responsibility. I'm trying my best to do my responsibility as a parent. It is only by his grace. Parenting is not an easy thing to do. But the good news is that the scripture, the scripture, the word of God has given us guidelines on how we will mold and mentor our children. So here's how okay, we will mold and mentor our children. First, we must train our children, train your children for parents, train your children in God's ways while they are young. In Proverbs uh, chapter 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he grows older, he will never or he will not abandon it. Now, it is just so interesting that when I checked on that word train up, okay, in, that is in the New American Standard Bible, that word train up, in that sentence, train up a child, okay? It only appeared, the Hebrew word only appeared five times in the entire Old Testament. And in four instances, that word for the train up, it was translated as dedicate. 
And you can see that in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 5. You will see twice that word uh, dedicate. And also in, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 63, and 2 Chronicles chapter 5, 7, verse 5. You will see there in, in, in 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles, that's just a parallel uh, passage. It's about the dedication of the, uh, of the temple. So in this sense, in, in the book of Proverbs, when it says train up a child, you can uh, actually use that word dedicate. Dedicate your children in the way you should go. And that way, of course, it, we're talking about God's ways. And when we say to dedicate, to train up, it means we are preparing our children to fulfill uh, his, her, God-given purposes in their, in their lives. Notice that it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And, the, the, and this way, again, this is about God's ways. We must prepare our children to walk in God's ways. It is not about our ways, but it is all about God's ways. Okay? It is not about our purposes but it is all about God's purposes for, for them, for our children. It says, even when he grows older, he will never abandon it. It means they, he or she, our children, will always remember the ways of God. So the example, we parents, the example that we are teaching our children, they will remember it. Just be sure that your example is based on God's word, how you are living your life. Okay? As a parent, I'm talking to the parents. How you are living your life, make sure that it is based on God's word because our children can see that as an example for them. So that is very important uh, for us to guide them, to teach them the ways of the Lord. Remember, it is not about our ways, not about our purposes. It is all about God's purposes for their lives, for the children's lives. Now, this guidance, we will see this especially when they are old enough okay, to, make, to make decisions in, in their lives. Let me just uh, share to you, okay, because uh, when my daughter uh, was about to, to enter college, okay, we, we are talking about of course, the course that she will be uh, be taking. Now, since she is into arts, okay, so she wants to take a course that is related to arts. Now, at first, I was hesitant about it uh, for her to take a course, an arts course, because during during my days, uh, my college days, it's all about science and and engineering. So I thought I thought. I, I always, I, I actually said to her, there's no money in, in art, okay? So take a science course or an engineering course. And then my wife actually reminded me, it is not about my purposes for her, but it is all about what God wants for her life. It is about the purpose of God in her life. So that is the reason why we are exposing her to, to God's word in order for her to discern the ways of God, in order for her to follow God. And then here I am imposing my, my purpose in her. So uh, and because of that rebuke from my wife, okay, we, we, we let her take the course that she, she wants. Okay? And, and the Lord somehow rebuked me because uh, right now, she is, even though she is at college she's, she's still studying uh, first year college she got a scholarship uh, from from uh, from from the school and also she is uh, earning because uh, she became uh, or she she was commissioned to do one uh, to, to illustrate in one uh, children's uh, book here in the Philippines so uh, and and that book will uh, will be released here in the Philippines in 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 the bookstore so she was commissioned to to draw for that, for that children, uh, children's book. So the Lord somehow uh, rebuked me because it, indeed it is what the Lord wants for her and it's not about what I want for her. And the Lord somehow uh, showed me that, hey, she can make money. She can make money out of her arts and even she can sell her all her paintings 
And uh, during my time, uh, 19 years old, all I care is about uh, playing basketball, even while, while in, in college. But my daughter, she is uh, earning uh, through her artwork. So that somehow that's a rebuke com- coming from the Lord. So my duty as a parent and your duty as a parent is to train up our children, to guide them, to let them know the ways of the Lord and to discern what is the will of God for them. It's not for us to impose our will for their lives. Now, in order for our children to discern what is God's purposes in in their lives, we need to use the word of God. We need to use uh, God's word as a guide, as their guide, okay, in order for them to to discern the the will of God. So it is for us as parents to expose them. So parents, expose your children to God's word. Listen, listen to to, to, uh, what uh, Moses has said in Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 9. It says here, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these command to these commands and that I am giving you today. Repeat them. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home. And when, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, when you are getting up, tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Clearly, the context of uh, these verses was that uh, Moses was talking to the parents. You can read that in verses 1 and 2. And it shows that in these verses... The parents, okay? The parents must expose their children to God's word. It is the responsibility of the parents, okay? Particularly the father, the father, okay? Because the father is the leader of the household. So, parents, let me ask you do you fight for your time with God and His word? Do you fight for your time with God and His Word? Because how can you expose, okay? How can you expose your children to God's Word if you yourself do not prioritize God's Word? Let me give you an example. Okay? Here in our church, okay, we just held a seminar defending the faith. And uh, when, when, when I announced it, I, 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 I invited them, of course, to attend the seminar. And then one parent said, I want to attend, but I have a lot of work. I still I have a lot of work to attend to. So when I heard that, actually, I was sad. I was somehow grieved because work is important. I understand that. Okay? Parents, work will always be there. And I understand that it is important. But how can you equip yourself in order for you to expose your children to God's word if you will not prioritize God's word? If you will not prioritize equipping okay, yourself with God's word. The church, okay, definitely I know FCC is doing uh, her part, the church. Okay, I know that freedom in Christ church is doing its part of offering you okay how to study the bible but you must make time to attend it all the seminars that the church is giving you and to expose our children to god's word it means that we must be intentional in studying the word of god and then teach them the same thing in our small group since most of the families in, in, my, in my own uh, small group, their kids uh, are still in, in the toddler age. So they told me how they are applying this, uh, this truth. They said, uh, they shared that they are, they are reading to their children stories, okay? 
the Bible stories, they use books that they got from uh, different Christian bookstores. So, and when one parent even even said that they are you uh, they are using uh, this uh, the old uh, the old TV TV show entitled Superbook. I don't know if you still know that for some of you parents uh, because they can still find it in YouTube. Okay, Superbook. So they are exposing their children to God's word using these uh, means. Okay, that uh, that 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 TV show Superbook. And also, parents, you can develop family altars. Okay, family altars. It means family devotion. Okay, this is the way how you will expose your children to God's word. So, for parents, invest. Okay, invest in in study Bibles. Start investing on books on how to read the Bible. Like, for example, if you have the resources, if you have an extra money, try to grab that book, Living by the Book by Howard Hendricks, or Reading the Bible for All It's Worth by, by, by Gordon Fee. It will help you okay, to, be, to be equipped so that you can expose your children to God's Word. So train your children in God's ways Expose your children to God's word and also teach your children to obey God's word. Listen to what the Lord Jesus has said. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person, okay? like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone, anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on a sand. When the rain and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse in a mighty crash. So clearly, okay, what Jesus was, was saying here is that we must do both, the hearing and obeying. Parents, parents must teach their children to obey God's word. Remember also the Great Commission. It's, it says there, teach them to obey all the things that I have commanded you. It doesn't say there, just teach them all the things I have commanded you. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, teach them to obey all the things I have commanded you. The question is, how are we going to teach them to obey, to hear and obey? Parents, it is all about your works. It is all about how you are applying God's word. Do they, do they see an example in you with the way you are living your life? Do they see the word of God? Do you set an example? Do you model to your children how to obey a passage? For example, how are you obeying what you are hearing Sunday after Sunday here at FCC? Do our children see how we are applying God's word in our lives? We, we must set an, 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 an example to our children because in that way, we are teaching them how to obey God's word. Now, not only that we must train our children in God's ways, to expose them in God's word, to teach them to obey God's word, but we also, as parents, we must leave a legacy before our children. Remember, this is how we will mold and mentor our children. Leave a legacy to them. Listen to what the psalmist has said in Psalm 78, verses 5 to 8. For he... God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which, okay, which he commanded our fathers, that they were to teach them to their children, 
so that so that here's the purpose so that the generation to come would know the children yet to be born that they would rise that they would arise and tell to their children so that they would put their confidence they would put their confidence in God and never and not forget the works of God but comply with his commandments and not to be like their fathers a stubborn and a rebellious generation a a a, a a stubborn and rebellious generation, a, a generation that did not listen to these parents, this, this generation, this stubborn generation, they did not prepare their hearts and whose spirit was not faithful to God. So in other words, we must not be like this, what the psalmist described here, a stubborn generation, but rather we must leave a legacy to the next generation, a legacy that, that, we, that we prepare our hearts, that we are living a faithful life unto God. Because the current generation, the now generation, the parents okay, must pass on to the next generation, to our children, of what it means to be faithful to God. And may the next generation see and hear from us the word of God. May we pass on to them the biblical literacy, biblical fluency, and biblical ascendancy. Biblical literacy, it is all about understanding the word of God. And biblical fluency, it talks about the wisdom, from understanding to wisdom, meaning from understanding the word of God to applying the word of God. And biblical ascendancy, it means putting premium, the centrality of God's word in our lives. And we must pass this on to the next generation. And also part of our responsibilities as parents okay, to our children is to walk your talk. To walk your talk. Remember, action speaks louder than words. We all know that. Action speaks louder than words. Our children look at what we are doing. Not, they, they are not just hearing what we are saying. A while ago, we started this, uh, this sermon with a video. The, the child following the pattern of his uh, father. So our children, they are looking at what we are doing. And somehow we set an example to them. But the question is, is it a good example or a bad example? Once again, look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, okay? starting with verse 3. I want you to observe this. Okay? It starts with the parents doing the word of God, meaning walking before the talking. Okay? Look at the walking part. Look at what Moses commanded the parents here. It says here again, now Israel, he was talking to the current generation, the parents, okay? You shall listen and be careful to do them, commandments of God, so that it may go well for you and that you may increase greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love. This commandment is first. Moses told this to the parents. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. So the parents, they, okay? First and foremost, they must first love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They must do it first, walking part, then the talking part. This is what uh, Moses said okay, in verse 7, and you shall repeat them. This is now the speaking, the talking part. You shall repeat them diligently to your sons, to your children, to your sons and daughters, and speak of them when you sit 
in your homes. Look at the emphasis here about talking of, of, of the word of God. When you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. So it is important that you first applying the word of God, then you share it to your children. Because our children is observing us. Okay? They are observing our lives. So for parents here who children are young, okay, start showing them how you are obeying God's word. And then teach them the word of God. Do you get it, parents? You first apply God's word when you when you read God's word, when you study God's word, you first apply it in your life and then teach it to your children. Why is this important? Because walking the talk is a prerequisite in doing discipline. Impose discipline to restore and not to exasperate. Again, this is part of our duties or to, to mold and mentor our children. That is to impose discipline. Okay? When we are imposing discipline, remember it's not for punishment. It is for restoration and not for exasperation. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24, it says, He who withholds his rod hates his children, hates his son and daughter. But he who loves him or her disciplines him or her diligently. And in our uh, scripture passage or in our scripture reading, it says there, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, you can see two things here. The rod and how, how are we going to discipline our children? The rod and the word of God, the instructions of the, of, of the Lord. Okay? So for parents, again, Discipline is for restoration. Discipline is not punitive. It is not for punishment. But it should. It is for correction, to restore our, our children. Now, before you use the rod, of course, for our children, uh, toddler, okay, we definitely use the rod because they can still understand if we will explain things to them using the word of God. So what they understand is the rod. But before you use the rod, Okay, first check your emotion when you are angry because your children they don't follow you. Even before you use the rod, first and foremost, check your emotion. Okay, don't, don't use the rod if your emotion is too high, if you are on high. Okay, when, when, or, or for example, when you are angry, okay, don't use the rod. Okay, now let your emotion settle first before you use the rod. So that you are in control of how you will uh, use the rod. But when your children are old enough, okay, I, I believe that it's more powerful. It's, it's not, the, not the rod, but the more powerful thing to, to, to use is the word of God. It is much better that you sit down with them and talk to them and use the word of God. Let them know why you are angry at them. Okay, Let them know. Why is it a sin? Why, why are you angry at them? Okay, explain what is wrong. Explain what is wrong in their action. Okay? Use the word of God because the word of God is better than the rod. The goal of discipline is restoration. Again, the discipline is not for punishment, but it is for correction. So use the word of God to correct your children because i believe i believe that uh, the word of god you can you can use that you can you can have that teaching moments with uh, with your children just uh, just recently i uh, my daughter uh, she she got her license uh, driving license and i had an opportunity to to drive her to that uh, driving school and while while we are on our way to that driving school i i, I take that as a teaching moment for her to uh, it says because it says they bring them up in the instructions of the lord so i took that as a teaching moment because we are we are all alone in the car 
It's just me and my daughter bringing her to that uh, driving school. So I used that as a teaching moment for her to talk about her, about the word of God. And the same is true with my son. I had that uh, uh, burger moment because uh, he loves to eat. So I took, her, I took him out. We, we ate a burger. And when after eating burger, I, I again took that as a teaching moment to discipline him in the instructions of the Lord. I am just, uh, just I just asked him of uh, about his readings, uh, uh, where he is at at his reading of the Word of God, or is he still reading uh, God's Word? But remember, before asking about the Word of God, we parents we must first do it. Just be sure, you parents, you are fighting for your time with God and His Word. Be sure of that. Before you ask your children to read God's word, to study God's word, they must see it first that we are doing it okay, as their parents. We, we should set an example. So that is the, the duties of parents. But in, in passing, let me just also speak to the children. I'd like to take this uh, opportunity because it's not just about the parents. Remember, the children also has uh, responsibilities to, your, to, to, to the parents. So for children, here's your duties. Okay, First, you must honor your parents. Then blessing will follow. Again, in Ephesians, Paul said, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may turn out well for you and that you may live long on the earth. And the word honor there, it means to show high regard to your parents. To, to respect your parents. And part of showing respect to your parents is to do good in your schooling, to act in a, also to act in a respectful manner towards other people. That is part of honoring your, your parents. Do not do what will go against God's word. And that is, that is somehow an example for you of what it means to honor your parents. Remember, you will never go wrong for our children at FCC. You will never go wrong in respecting your parents. You will be blessed by God for doing it. And also part of your duties for our children is to obey your parents because it pleases God. Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, Children, obey your parents in everything for this is pleasing to the Lord. So follow your parents. Follow your, what, what your parents is telling you. No parents would like their children to go astray. They always want what is best for you. Now, for as long as it does not contradict the word of God, follow your parents. So again, for parents, just be sure that you know, you know the word of God so that you can be sure that what you are telling to your children, it is based on God's word so that they would obey God's word. And also, children, help your parents as you are able. Help your parents as you are able. Look at what Paul said to Timothy. He said, but if any widow has children or grandchildren, they must first learn to show proper respect for their own family and to give back compensation to their parents, for this is acceptable in the sight. Of God. Of course, in this context, Paul was talking about an adult children. Okay? It, is, it is true okay, that parents must not treat their children like an investment, but it is only right for, for an adult children who are already working to help, of course, their parents according to their means. Now, how about our young children? Okay? How can you apply this okay, for the young children? Enjoy, for, enjoy the company of your parents. Okay? To, 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 uh, to help your parents, it means to enjoy the company of your parents, to do household chores. Help them in doing household chores. And also forgive your parents if they failed you. Forgive your parents. Remember, your parents is not perfect. We are not perfect. So forgive your parents if they failed you. So that is the guidelines okay, of, of God's word about parenting and, of course, on how children would relate 
to their parents. Now, in closing, I'd like us to have some uh, reflection. Okay, I want you to uh, take note of these uh, questions. Based on biblical duties that you heard today, especially for parents and also for children, what do you think? Are you fulfilling your responsibilities? Are you fulfilling your responsibilities as a parent and even as a child, as a, as a child to your, to, your, to your parents? And what will be your concrete action steps okay, for, in order for you to be able to fulfill your God-given responsibilities? What will be your concrete action step? Okay? After this service, what, what are you going to do as a parent? What are you going to do as a, as a child okay, to your mom and dad? And do you need a breakthrough in your life right now in order for you to fulfill your responsibilities? If the answer is yes, then ask the Lord. Ask the Lord because indeed he has given us his divine power in order for us to live a godly life. So definitely God will give us a breakthrough. Just ask him. Because he will empower you to do all these responsibilities. May the Lord bless you, FCC. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Irwin, for that wonderful message about... Uh, being godly parent uh, or parenting i know it did like i thought i'm gonna be off the hook you know like she's, she's just targeting the, all the parents but yeah it's re reciprocation like we have duties on our own like being as children but also if i'm not i'm not a parent yet but yeah, in god's will but i'm learning from this that it comes from us to teach you know our our children so I learned, that's the main thing I learned. And also, yeah, we're, children are observant. So we have to walk the talk. And yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Irwin, for that. I'll definitely keep learning about that. Um, yeah. So does anyone want to share about the word? Or, or Tita Ida? Good morning. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for a very uh, powerful message. And going uh, point by point, it's very important. So I just want to share uh, what caught my attention is the, the message to follow your parents, provided it's not contradicting to what the Bible is saying. Because I remember this incident with me and my family. We love to cross.